I'm gonna take a shot on this one. You're gonna see fear. I'm buying everybody around on this. Oh my god. All right, Phil Brady Kachuk's um, contract talks will drag into this season. I'm gonna buy around on this. Um, I know that Dorian came out and was saying that they're not far away, but when you've got the guy's brother, when you got Brady's brother Matthew coming out and saying that they're not close. Um, yeah, I, I think this might drag on a bit. I don't know if this is going to go to December like Nylanders did, but I, I could see this going into October and possibly into November. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm buying everybody around on this. Uh, I hate to say it cause I think they need him on the ice, but I'm buying around. Uh, I, this is, we were talking about the RFAs last, last week, the, which ones could miss some time. My number one is uh, Carell the Thrill. He's definitely missing some time. Um, oh, yeah. But I also kind of think that Vancouver can't afford not to put Patterson and um, Hughes into their opening lineup. Uh, so that's that's one reason why I think that that might get done. But that being said, I mean, uh, damn. I mean, if Ottawa is serious about that, the rebuild is over. Again, stupid statement, Pierre Dorian. But it's then in that case, sign this kid. Sign this kid. Get him. Sign get the him. kid and get and and lock him up long term. Yeah, lock and him again, we're, we're we're not saying just give in to any demands. No, that's that's ridiculous. But it's just you you gotta you gotta lock him up long term. So yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm buying around on that. Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson will both remain with the Canucks. Um, there was one parameter I never understood about this. Is this in general? I'm saying or? I'm saying right now after this whole thing. Okay. All right. So this season. Yeah. So okay. So uh, uh I, I'm gonna say beer right now because okay. there is some serious they're in some serious jeopardy right now with the uh with the, the, the contract situation, with the cap situation, I should say, with everything. Uh, reports are that they were close to bridging Quinn Hughes, which I get it. It's smart. He didn't have a great season defensively last year from a defensive standpoint. Um, you know, people are going to come out and question his play. Uh, but I can tell you right now, th this, this team needs to get it, it, its stuff in check. They need to get their priorities in check, and they need to they need to move somebody, whether it's Tyler Myers or whoever it may be. They've got to move some salary, and they've got to do it quick. And I, I just – I don't know who's really going to line up to help them out. I mean, I would say the Islanders could use a Tyler Myers, but where is their cap space? Yeah, I mean, they're that, both two teams that don't have cap space at all, really, to do or, anything. Or even where's their um, where's their prospects they got to offer? I so mean, Tyler Myers ain't gonna cost in, in this situation is definitely not gonna cost much right now. If that's the piece that gets moved, and right? I, but on the other, but on the other hand, it's sort of like, um, you still got to. I don't think he's an Andrew Ladd or a uh, Shane Gosses bear, and I don't even think Shane. No, Gosses no, no, no. Shane Gosses bear deal, but, by the way. Look at what. But look at what Nick Letty got, and he's um, actually a little younger mm -hmm. and probably a better player at this point than Tyler Myers with a lesser contract. So uh, I, I just I, – I don't think that Tyler Myers is going to cost a lot, especially when everyone knows that Vancouver is bent over a barrel to try to get these two signed, and they're mm -hmm. trying to move Tyler Myers in order to get them to – that that's saying it's if. It's just a hypothetical – because we don't know who they're going to move. So I, I I really have my concerns about this team keeping the both of them right now. Um, We've also talked in past shows about if there's any player you would offer sheet, it's Elias Pettersson, especially since uh, the Canucks are over a barrel right now. Yeah. I also have reservations about paying uh, young players way too early. Uh, I've 
openly talked about how the Connor McDavid contract was the worst thing for this league. Um, even though, yes, the guy basically earns that money, you also couldn't give him $12 million in his fourth season. Um, because then the ripple effect went down the league, and that's why Jack Eichel got t- is getting $10 million right now. Um, Connor McDavid got $12 million because just like Columbus with Rick Nash, they had to give him that contract to keep him there. Exactly. And I understand that too. Anyway, back to this one. Uh, you can offer Elias Pettersson, you know, uh, an offer sheet and get him out of there. I, I guess these two, they got to sign. I think they, I think they're going to sign. Uh, I'm going to say that they're, I'm going to buy everybody around. They're both going to, they're both going to remain with the, the Canucks. I understand it's in serious jeopardy, but those are two players. I'll move heaven and earth and make sure that I keep. Um, and maybe not adding on, OEL's salary, even though I like him as a player. Um, maybe not. I mean, Jim Jim Benning has isn't exactly the best GM in the league. <laughs> no. So, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll just I'll just say it like that. So, and uh, I'll leave all other words out of there. Yeah. Um, before I guess we move on to the next uh, topic in there. I'll answer this question. Uh, yes, gun tone granny, it does count against the cap. The The dead cap hit will count against the cap. Um, I don't know if they have the option really to, to buy anyone out right now. Um, if you give me a second, I can take a look at cap friendly, take a look at Vancouver's situation and see what a Tyler Myers uh, buyout would do to help them. The uh, computer is just being a little and slow I right now. If I just forget if there's another buyout window at the end of the preseason. Um, that's the uh, that's the, the the second window is for arbitration eligible. I believe I would have to I'd have to get into contact with Stephen because Stephen and I talked about this uh, mm-hmm. a few times before. Um, right now in dead cap, they have two point four million tied up between. Uh, or actually, no, only 550k this year between Brayden Holpe's buyout and uh, Jake for Cannons. Um, but next year that goes up to 2.4 million as Holpe's goes up to 1.9, and Vertanen's 50k goes up to 500k next year. So it's not like they have a ton of dead cap. Um, if they were looking to get rid of Tyler Myers because they have eight defenders that really look like they could see time with this team um, and none of their forwards are really have egregiously bad contracts that they would move. So really the guy that I would think that they would look to move would probably be Tyler Myers. Um, let's see here. I want to see if you could. Well, uh, I guess I could get on the phone with the Arizona Coyotes of the Detroit Red Wings again. Uh yeah, how many more years does he have on that deal? He's got to have like two. Tyler Tyler Myers has three more years this year. That's, I was uh, thinking three, so. Yeah, 22, 23, and uh, 24. So I'm trying to see the buyout calculator. Okay, there it is. All right, so select the player. Uh, team Vancouver. And. And actually, by the way, welcome to the show, Miko. But uh, the, uh, the it's interesting hearing all the that people are all the the things people are saying about Daryl Sutter out of Flames Camp this year that they might have a change of culture and you might see something different happen with them. Can they buy out Tyler Myers? Why is it not giving me? They might not be able to right now. No, oh, no. Okay, here it goes. All right. So, um, if they buy out Tyler Myers this season, it actually wouldn't even help them that much. It would actually save them one million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred eleven dollars. So the cap, the dead cap, would be four point eight eight eight, and then eight eight nine million. 
Yeah, so you're better off trying to trade him or to uh, hold on to him because he's he's got a he's got a five million dollar signing bonus, and the signing bonuses are really the problem with um, with trying to buy out players. Sorry, I was trying to un, un- highlight it on my screen for some weird reason, but um, the the signing bonuses are the problem. And Tyler Myers has a signing bonus in this year and in 2024. So those two years, the the dead cap hits would be really high and they wouldn't be that much. So Tyler Myers really has a buyout, what they call a buyout proof contract right now. What kind of yeah. like what Andrew Ladd had uh, a, a year or two ago. So um, he's got to be traded and maybe with small salary retention to help a team. But if I'm Vancouver, if I'm betting – I'm going. I'm going to Arizona again, and I'm saying, "Hey, you know what? Can you take Tyler Myers from us? And what do we have to give you to take Tyler Myers?" Yeah, and you know what? Um, that's and who who knows? He'll he'll probably sign another guy to a, a ridiculous contract like Louis Erickson. Um, oh jeez! I mean, it's it's there. There are just those GMs. You go, God. I mean, they never uh, sooner, or later, sooner, sooner or later, that's where Jeff Gordon's going to get a job. He's going to get a job with one of those teams that their GM just keeps on making boneheaded decisions. Yep. And he'll come in because he knows how to manage the cap a little bit better. Yep. Um, moving on, Christian Dvorak will put up career highs in goals, assists, and points. Philk. I'm going to say beer. Um, yep. Only because I'm not 110% sure that he will. I have a good feeling that he will. Um, I don't know how much that'll be. I, I, I could see like 25 goals, somewhere in the 50-point range, maybe between 25 to 30 assists, somewhere around there. I mean, I, 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 I think it'll happen, especially if he's their second-line center. And, he, and Montreal's got good wing depth. That's one thing that you got to look at with Montreal, and you got to say, "Hey, like there, there's a lot of good wingers here." I mean, you you have your Drouin's going to be back if he's healthy. He'll he'll be back. Uh, you got Gallagher, uh, you got Josh Anderson, you got Cole Caulfield, who people are talking about the rookie of the year that they call their favorite. Um, you, you've got other good wingers on this team. They've they've still got really good depth on the wings. So um, I'm. I'm going to say beer, but I could see it happening. I'm going to go beer. Uh, I, I, there's so many temptations to go either way on all those. That's why this really is the perfect uh, answer for this, because he could either explode with the, the different line mates that he's going to have, different competition that he's going to have, or just – Maybe get exposed. That could be also another thing. I mean, a lot of a lot of guys get a bigger, uh, like a a bigger job, and just don't do that well with it. So um, yeah, I, I, it could be could be one or the other. But we're gonna find out soon enough. I'll tell you that because um, I like I like Dvorak as a player, and not just because of the name, because I always liked Radic Dvorak. But <laughs> it's I I he's 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 a good player. And on this um, episode of NHL players with the same last name, not related to each other. <laughs> well, the best is whenever you see the ones that are uh, are related to somebody going, oh, my God. I remember watching his dad as a rookie, and I was in high school. So William uh, Nylander. Yes, William <laughs> Nylander. For Alex one. Nylander. <laughs> oh. All right. And when we were together the other day, we had NHL Network on, and they had their – top 50 players right now we understand all these lists are subjective and can be changed at a moment's notice Kale McCarr was number 13 yeah that's too high um, um, I'm buying everybody around on this yeah you can go ahead first I don't even know where Adam Fox was so I'm not even comparing uh, Adam yeah, Fox to Kale McCarr you know, one's got the hardware one didn't yeah one, one's got the hardware and, you know, everybody's going to turn around and say, oh, well, Kale McCarr had a better 2020 than Adam Fox did, and and, and he won the Calder. And, and 
and, and Kel McCarr puts up all these points. Well, yeah, does, does Kel McCarr play defense the same way that Adam Fox does? Oh, but he had Ryan Graves, and Adam <laughs> Fox has really lean green. Well, too bad. Because Cal McCarr, his defensive lapses are part of the reason why that Chicago – I mean, Chicago, Colorado can't get over the cup. I'm talking about Chicago for whatever reason. I don't even know why. But, I mean, Cal McCarr, as great of a point producer as he is, and he probably will win a Norris in the very near future. He will. Uh, he, he's still not a great defender. He's not. And the, the, it, the eye test, the metrics – they, you could see it. You could just see it. And, and that's, uh, to me, I, 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 if you can't put 13 – all right, so let's just brainstorm right now 13 players that you would take on your team regardless of position over Cal McCarr. Okay. Because I can think of 13 off the top of my head pretty damn easily. You want all right, me to do you want to alternate or you wanna, do you want to go one for one or you want to – One for one. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll start. McDavid. McKinnon. Dreisaitl. Uh, Pernarin. Crosby. Hedman. Malkin. Braden Point. Ovechkin. Nikita Kucherov. And Ovechkin was 17 right there, by the way. Yeah, Ovechkin was 17, yeah. Um, I mean... Rantanen. Who was a four, uh, 14, I believe, for 14, just below yeah. him. Um, ranted and ranted out. There's lots of guys we're missing too. We know this. Um, There's one, Alexander Barkov. Oh, and since we're in Florida, Jonathan Huberdo. Yeah, I mean, it, there's. Uh, I mean, Sebastian Aho, I believe, was 21. I would, I would take him over Kale McCarr. Uh, I and probably way, also, would too. And by the way, it's also because. Look, centers are just going to be more important to the game. That's just what everything is. Everything goes through the centers. It says something when Gordie Howe and uh, Bobby Orr are mentioned among the greatest players of all time because centers are usually the play drivers everywhere. That's Adam why Fox. Adam Fox, who won the Norris. I mean, we, were, we talked about Mika Zibanejad and went, ah, eh, we'll give him some credit. But this is also sometimes where I go, look, the Canadian press – Guys, open up your eyes a little bit more. Uh, we haven't and even again, talked about goaltenders. Andre Vasilevsky. Andre Vasilevsky, who can completely Connor change Hellen. around a series. I mean, we didn't even talk about Mark Scheifele, who you know I always uh, have the That's little hope for. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. That's a close one for me. Yeah. So, again, and again, well, Kel McCarr is only third-year player, second-year player? Uh, third year. Third year. Okay. So, I mean – Plenty of time for in the win Norris trophies, guys. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I, I, that, I, this, I kid, this kid is that good, and his defense is going to improve too. And he's not a train wreck either defensively. Don't get me wrong; I'm not comparing him. No, but say. he does leave a lot to be desired at this point. And that, right, that, so you don't put him at 13. Yeah, I, I, so, I agree. Right, I, agree. Like, I, I think I think on the list, Charlie Charlie McEvoy, uh, Charlie McAvoy is uh, 31 because Banajad's 39. Charlie McAvoy was ranked way too. Uh, you know what? Charlie McAvoy might have been ranked a little too low. I think Charlie McAvoy, for for my money, is probably a top five defenseman in the NHL right now. Oh, I, I know he's real good. I mean, I'm not arguing that. I, I'm biased Again, too because he's a Long Beach guy. My family has connections to his, but it, so, I, I still oh, think he's incredible. And by the way, I'm 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 clearly buying everybody around. Uh, not too hot. It's too high. Yeah. So. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Well, that was the end of our bar talk segment, guys. But we want to know what you think about everything. Also, don't forget to listen to this idiot and like, share, and subscribe. Um, is Morgan Barry going to make the team? Is it Dan Shark going to play 60 games? You think Kale McCarr is rated too, way too high? Um, we well, you know we kind of lulled some people to sleep, but uh, talking about Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson in the CBA for a little bit. Um, but uh, and do you think uh, Brady Kachuk's going to miss some time? Throw it all down in the comments below, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Mm, yes. Or favor. <laughs> also, again, um... <laughs> where's our 
favorite Mohawk Islanders fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Eichel too. I I gotta I gotta put Eichel ahead of him. That's another one. Oh, uh, by the way, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I've been holding on to this video clip for a while. I haven't been able to get rid of it. So uh, here we go. Hey, Sabres fans. Rick Harrison here from Pawn Stars. And I know you want a high return for Jack Eichel, but the best I could do is a prospect and a billboard. That's, that's it. I mean, that's the deal. Yeah, because when you have no <laughs> leverage, that is the deal. Oh. oh, doing everything we can to trigger Sabres fans. Yeah, yeah, no, my friend Sue is gonna is gonna come to the bar and have some. Uh, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. that's the one that was talking to me that one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God. Uh, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.